Hey what's up guys, it's Dylan, welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be starting one of the many series that I said I was going to do, one of the many solo series on GameCube that I wanted to do. It seems that every solo series that I want to do is on GameCube. That's probably because it's like my favorite console of all time. Probably helps that I was born in 98, but... <clears throat> so here we got, um, possibly one of my favorite games of all time. This is the Spongebob Squarepants movie game, uh, made by THQ who no longer holds the title uh, for Spongebob for making Spongebob movie or making Spongebob video games and uh, they also made Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom and it did that because I'm still talking and it went into a cutscene so fuck you I'm gonna talk here um, <clears throat> those two games are some of the most incredible games I've ever played and it's also breaking new ground because they're uh, TV show based games and movie based games and generally, every movie-based game I've ever seen is all about initial sales, and is generally kind of a placebo because it's like, okay, let's take it for an example, like the Kung Fu Panda movie game or some piece of shit. This window finally popped up. Hang on a second. I'm just gonna be monitoring my mic levels for some reason. They like randomly shoot up, but I'm just gonna look at that. You don't need to know that. That's not important. But um. <clears throat> Like, that Kung Fu Panda game, that game was a piece of shit. I have it. I have it on the Wii. And it's just the worst game ever. And it's just kind of relying on the fact that the people who like the movie will probably buy the game, which generally holds true until they fucking play the game, and it's a piece of shit. But uh, that doesn't matter to them because it's initial sales. But in this case, THQ was an extremely passionate company when they held the title, and they made two fucking awesome games. They also made... Uh, Spongebob Truth or Square, I think that was the third game in their trio of, of great games. And I have yet to play that one, but it is a bit newer. I've heard it was pretty decent, but um, any game after that was made under Activision. They bought the title away from THQ, and they no longer hold it. THQ has publicly said on their social media that they aim to uh, make another Spongebob game, and they really, really want to. Um, they've made some decent games in general, but, or sorry, not THQ, what the fuck am I saying? Heavy Iron Studios. Every time I said THQ in the last, like, minute or two, say Heavy Iron. I'm so sorry, that's, I should honestly start over, but I don't really care enough, because I really want to play this. So, Battle for Bikini Bottom, of the two of those games, Battle for Bikini Bottom and the movie, I prefer Battle for Bikini Bottom, but unfortunately, I'm emulating, I don't really have the setup to be able to record straight from my console, and the ISO file for Battle for Bikini Bottom is a piece of shit, and it has a lot of graphical glitches. This one does as well, but it's definitely much more manageable. So I'm playing this one, and also I recently just 100%ed Battle for Bikini Bottom on my real console, so definitely not looking to play that again anytime soon. It's kind of like a once every year or so. I go back to it and look at it. It's always fun. So I'm just going to be overwriting that file that I didn't really do anything on. I used it for audio tests, but... Um, this is probably going to take a million years, so I'll come back to you when it's finished. <sighs> Alright, here it is. Here's the cutscene that doesn't have video because this ISO is a piece of shit. Alright, awesome. <laughs> so here's the cutscene that works, but yeah. Alright, whatever. <laughs> Let's just get on with the level. Generally, cutscenes kind of suck on ISOs. I don't know why. ISOs are never perfect. Uh, the Luigi's Mansion was probably the cleanest ISO I've ever played my life and that made that a very stress-free one I could even uh, upscale the internal resolution on the game to uh, I think it was 1.5 times native <clears throat> I had to tweak some settings and lower some internal resolutions I'm doing I think I'm just doing one times native um, for this because without that I actually get like these annoying like red squares and weird graphical bugs in the middle of the game and that that's that's not a me thing that's a universal thing on the dolphin wiki as people will say that that's just a thing in general with the ISO. So, I had to do some stuff to remedy that, but I think the game is looking okay. I noticed that that one weird looking guy from the creatures, and the reason I don't know his name, I think it might be Spencer. He's, he's the kind of weird looking one who looks like he stunted his growth really bad, and he has like kind of uncomfortable looking facial hair. Um, he, I believe, has just finished or is playing or has finished playing a long time ago this game I don't remember when it was uploaded but I remember I saw it on his channel and it looked like shit I don't really keep track of the tree uh, wow well, I don't really keep track of the creatures but I know that guy obviously makes pretty decent money at least and uh, I have no idea what the fuck contributed to that just looking like total ass but um <clears throat> hopefully I mean I've been reviewing the footage from my tests and it definitely looks a hell of a lot better than his people in the comments like actively complain about how that totally looks like garbage Africa, but, um, 
I don't, I don't even know how that would even happen. But I mean, the quality of his videos are quite decent. Like the like the the watchability of them, like how good they are. Not necessarily the resolution of the the graphics in the games. So he still gets good ratings. But <coughs> my voice is gritty today, which is just awesome because this is the only day I really wanted to record. I've been wanting to record this for quite some time, but never really felt it until now. And I really need to get more solo series out there because it's easy to, uh, for my co-op series with Zach to kind of not really like lose their luster or something, but just like, I don't know. It, I don't want it to be just that. I think it's healthy for us to both have solo and co-op series. We'll always record together. That's just a given. And it's almost always zombies because that's the thing we usually agree on. And uh, speaking of Battle for Bikini Bottom, I actually have another series to do, for, uh, solo series, because Zach said I'd um, I'd probably enjoy it quite a bit more than him because I know a lot more about the game. But there was a custom World at War map based on Battle for Bikini Bottom, and I saw NGT Zombies playing it. Sorry, I don't know if the audio. Fuck. Sorry, I don't know if the audio skipped there, so you didn't hear me or something. But NGT Zombies was playing the Battle for Bikini Bottom custom map. And that looks dope as shit. It looks actually verbatim like the like the original game. So I immediately know where I'm going, which is pretty cool. But um <clears throat> hard to say what kind of strings would be attached, but I would I'm so looking forward to that. I uh, have the link, I'm probably gonna download it and uh, record that next. My next solo series, um if I do another GameCube game, is going to be one of two. And I'm not really sure if I should just tell you guys now and watch this amazingly entertaining cutscene that you probably can't hear very well. Yeah, we're going to see quite a bit of that. Alright. Next level. Is a Patrick level. Good old Patrick. He's, uh... From my experience, he's a bit worse than Spongebob. Although he does have a pretty cool cartwheel attack, he does not have the ability to jump and attack. Because A and B... Because uh, A is jump and then B is attack. When you try to do both, you, you won't uh, get anything. So, that's because A and B is... Sorry, I'm, I'm totally fucking up how I'm wording this. Whatever, I'm kind of tired, sorry. But um, A and B combined is uh, reserved for a uh, power that Patrick unlocks later in the game. It's called the Ass Smash, um, and that's pretty great, pretty important uh, later on because you get to hypnotize stuff, and I'm probably not going to try to use spoilers. Chances are when you're watching this, you know quite a bit about the game anyway, but yeah. What the fuck? All the cutscenes introducing new enemies are fucking stupid as hell. Alright. <clears throat> I've actually got an upgrade point. So I'm probably just gonna use that now. Um, usually I like to upgrade health. Wow. Imagine that. No visual. <laughs> this ISO is missing so many files. It's alright though. I'm still getting everything I need for the main level. Um... So that's a new feature that Battle for Bikini Bottom does not have, and it's uh, upgrade points. And if you see in the top right, every time I get a dumbbell from breaking a crate or killing an enemy or just picking them up when they're laid out like this, uh, you contribute more points toward earning an upgrade point. Every time you fill up that green bar in the top right, you're going to earn another upgrade point. And um, every time you get an upgrade point, you can upgrade uh, one thing, obviously. And so you got you got like health first. I like to just do that first because it makes everything a little bit easier, a little less stressful. When you have, like, only three health, it's kind of easy to, to die if you make a few too many mistakes and stuff like that. So that's usually a good shield at the beginning. But, um... Sorry. Look at all the extra shit on here that just, like, does not give you anything. It's just, let me just break this barrel and have some, like, random flower come out. I think there's a secret. Yeah got the treasure chest um i forgot to say this at the beginning because i was talking a lot about heavy iron and all that shit but um i'm gonna be trying to do 100 percent in this game and 100 percent 
for me personally means all the goofy goober tokens basically if you're more familiar with battle for bikini bottom their uh, sort of checkpoint reward system was golden spatulas and in this game it's these right here the um, the goofy goober token and if you see here the the silver circles here that kind of just look like porthole windows or whatever those are those are goofy goober tokens that you haven't gotten yet but that you've been in the area to be able to unlock them. I don't know if that really makes sense, but basically the question marks Everything every slot there is potentially an earnable goofy goober token And if it's silver without the goofy goofy goober token filled in it I'm gonna start to hate saying that is um, One that you haven't earned yet, but you've been in the area where you can earn it and then it'll kind of unlock itself for you. See, that's the that's the bullshit with jellyfish. I'm just trying to get more dumbbells so I can upgrade quicker. But uh, yeah, you know, in in that way, um, Battle for Bikini Bottom and and uh, this game are kind of a collectathon because you get in Battle for Bikini Bottom for whatever reason they call them shiny objects. I don't really know if that's a reference to some sort of SpongeBob episode. I don't really think it is, but it just sounds really stupid. And in this game, it's uh, the, these dumbbells because it's all about the the now that we're men thing in the in the plot line of the movie. But um, I need two. Yeah, here you get to talk to Mindy every now and then. I have some navel lint. What the fuck? All right, so I need one more goofy goober token because I only got the one from the first level. So we're gonna give this a shot. I usually like the combat arena challenges. They're pretty quick and easy. You'll have a few of them throughout the game. Not too bad. Uh, fun fact, to this day, I have actually never beaten the game. I've come very close, and every single time I give up at Planktopolis. And it's not because I can't beat it, it's because I kind of just get bored. And I'll start to... You'll start to see some of the problems that I have with this game. And it, they don't make the game terrible, they just make it kind of... Did another episode just start? Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, the... There are a lot of things in this game later on that make it just kind of, I don't know, monotonous, just boring, kind of dreadful. There are a lot of repeated things that I don't really like, and, and you'll very quickly start to see it within this episode or the next. You'll you'll very quickly see what I mean, and I'll, and I'll point it out. But Overall, this game's fucking awesome. It brought a lot of good things to the table. It has better music than Battle for Bikini Bottom, which personally I would say also had great music. So, they definitely work pretty hard with that. They have cool stuff for little stages like this. You can probably hear the little mini mini battle music going on. Those guys take two hits. Fuck that. How did I wipe out all those guys early? I think I just got like a really lucky spin attack or something. Fuck off. There are a lot of cool attacks. SpongeBob and Patrick will unlock later. But, uh, ultimately SpongeBob is like way more powerful. In Battle for Bikini Bottom, you actually had three playable characters. In this one, you only have uh, SpongeBob and Patrick. But in uh, the other one, you had SpongeBob, Patrick, and Sandy. And Sandy was, I wouldn't say OP, but she was easily way better than the other characters because she could have a triple jump. And it wasn't actually three jumps. It was, it was your double jump, and then the third jump would be you deploy a lasso, and you can like fly for like a solid 10 seconds. It's pretty crazy, actually. It goes so much farther, and you had those little. You remember that thing earlier in the "I'm ready to press"? Well, it's it's still in that level. It's just that we're in a combat arena right now. Um, the ice cube that I, that Patrick stuck his tongue to it kind of looked like a like a gift box or something. That's what I thought it was for like three years, but it's it's actually an ice cube with like a little twist tie on it. Doesn't really matter, but that's the thing that Patrick stuck his tongue to. That that's a Patrick exclusive thing, and there was something just like that. Uh, in the other game for Sandy and it was uh, Texas symbols and you could uh, kind of attach a lasso to them you'd swing it and then you'd kind of uh, you'd, you'd occasionally have a little few mini games throughout the levels where you could utilize that and it was pretty cool a lot of a lot of cool little things in this game and BFBB that just made it just made it really entertaining and you know the more Spongebob you've watched as a, as a kid the more the more references you'll get there's a there's quite a few gimmicks in uh, BFBB and this one. I can't quite remember all of them, but there's a lot of attention to detail with heavy iron in general. You could tell they put so much thought into making an elaborate game that still made sense and complied with the plotline of the movie and the show.